Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ghost 4v4 Search and Destroy for September 26th. It is myself, Lano, joined by Taylor Keating. And Taylor, we're up again here yet again with another series from the side of the Sandlot. They just got done beating the side of Hunt at two games to one. And now we're hopping in here toward their round at two matchup this time versus the team known as Fat. It's uh, actually their team name. Not just, not at all saying anything stereotypical. I'm just literally saying their name is Fat. So, yeah. It's an interesting team name. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a. Yeah, well, it's not, a, it's not a bad team name. It's just an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, right? hey. As it's a 1v2 situation already. Yeah, that Demi finding one top broken with that sniper rifle. We'll see how we can try and retake the site versus both Aquanic and Drafty. And this time Aquanic showing suit as he'll find the hat trick in round one. As uh, at, at least from the first series that we got to witness, it seemed that at different times there were players that were going off from the side of the sandlot. We saw in map one it was Drafty. In map two it was OTO. And then in map three it was both Drafty and OTO. Uh, of course, we do know of Aquanic. I know he plays with Drafty quite a bit. Uh, I know I've seen him play at least as of recently, uh, at least in all of our 44 tournaments with uh, Hugs, uh, which they've teamed under a number of different, you know, team names. Most recently, it's kind of been Goldblood, uh, is at least a name they like to rock with. Uh, this guy's also very well known as well. So I'm curious to see how they will kind of move forward in this tournament. Of course, after already taking down a, a titan of this tournament uh, in the side of Hunnit. Uh, but it looks like OTO. I cannot miss this. OTO. Oh, my God. OTO literally just got an ace and made everyone look... OTO good. has 27 kills. 27 what is this? In the last... In the last he's a, he, he literally... I need to follow this kid on Twitter. What's going on? I need to find 27 Twitter 27 well. kills in the last three and a half maps. Or two and a half maps. That's insane. That's unreal stuff from him as he gets one of the easiest aces that I think I've ever seen. Not one of the easiest, but one of the most impressive... Aces I've ever seen. OTO. Easy. I was about to say, Landon, yeah. what kind of player are you? Jeez, Louise. Yeah. Well, it was not easy, but he made it look easy. Is the thing that I was going for. But, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. We all know that I'm very talented at Call of Duty and could easily make that play happen every day of the week. So, you know. It's just, yeah. Uh, you know Definitely it's a tier one pro player Absolutely. at heart, honestly. Absolutely. My gun skill uh, used to be decent. Now it's uh, pretty much faded. But uh, Demi actually gets the responding kill. Actually got the early hit marker there. On to OTO, but uh, was able to finish him off in the end. ShamWow now left in a one on three. The L11 in his back pockets. Bomb is down. He's already taking shots, and this should be a responding round coming in from the side of Fat. But uh, we'll see if the quickness of ShamWow will come into play. Up close, finds one, tries to find the second, gets the hit markers, but thankfully Papa Squiz will be there for the response. So a much needed round there if you are Fat in this situation. But uh, I know we were kind of discussing, though. Drafty, Aquanic, OTO, all these guys have the potential to go off. And a team that you could definitely not sleep on when it comes to any of these tournaments here, Taylor. Like I said, any of these guys have the capability to go off. And we witnessed that in round two where we see OTO literally get an ace in, I think, what, eight seconds? Pretty much, yeah. So definitely it's I mean, the dude has 27 kills. In, in, yeah, 27 kills is insane in two and a half maps. But something that we, we, we noticed uh, kind of towards the end of, of that last game was that ShamWow was... I think three and eight, and then the other one, he, I think he was negative as well. As he gets taken down again, and he's one and three. I, I, if Shamwell, I think he needs to pick it up just a tiny bit, a tiny bit for them to, to especially not only compete in this matchup right now, but if they want to get to get in the finals and oh, play absolutely. against the likes of maybe Attach and Zuma. Oh, for sure. I think it's fair to say that uh, he definitely has to pick it up if they want to consistently have a chance of victory in all the series that they're going to be playing in. If they continue uh, to beat the side of Fat, of course, that is yet to be seen. But kind of an interesting last round that we ended up being uh, witness to. OTO made a very aggressive rush through middle. He kind of gets picked off. I think it's fair to say the side of the Sandlot feels pretty confident. They just beat the side of Hunnit, a team that was probably predicted to most likely be in the finals. I think it's fair to say of everyone's predictions, mine included. Uh, they take them down in, uh, what, a, a very close map number one and map number two, which both go to round 11. They end up kind of destroying them in map number three. But they're definitely feeling pretty confident. Uh, OTO, like I said, a very aggressive rush at the start. But I think they've got to play pretty carefully. They cannot let themselves get overconfident when it comes down to a team that is fairly filled with slightly more unknown players. I think I've heard of Demi. I've heard of Nimbo in the past. Uh, guys who I've seen, I think, in the uh, online you know, tournament. Fair to say quite a bit. Uh, but they cannot, by any means, slack when it comes down to this one. As uh, there currently is a three-on-three three here to decide who will take the advantage in this one. At the same time, Demi and Squiz responding for kills. And uh, Drafty 
1v3. We'll see what we can do. As uh, he will do nothing. And Squiz will shut him down with the Remington at range. <laughs> Again, Chamog is taken out kind of uh, in an awkward fashion as I was watching him. He's been using the sniper the entire time. I, he's, I guess he's just kind of playing for picks and, and information. But uh, 1 and 4 and 1 and 3 out of drafty as uh, OTO, he, he can't have 27 kills. He, he can't go off every single round for them to win uh, this tournament and even in this map. So uh, we need to see a, a little bit more of a balanced uh, slaying out of, uh, of the squad of Sandlot. Absolutely. Looks like uh, Aggressive Rush here coming in toward that off-site as uh, kills already starting to at least potentially be made as Squiz finds the first blood up close and personal fight. This time it's Sham Wow who comes out as the victor. As uh, here comes another fight, Nimbo shuts down Shan Wow in response. So an even kill trade if you are the son of Fat, as they will now have the man advantage in their favor. Three on two. And uh, Nimbo playing it well with the bomb in hand will kind of babysit his other two teammates onto this A site. But one player is ready and waiting. It is going to be drafted, but he gets met with the headshot that comes in from Dimmy. As it now is going to be four rounds to two. Advantage toward Fat and uh, Dimmy. Despite taking shots. Gets the nice headshot in the end. Papa Squiz on a seven kill streak. Papa Squiz. You cannot mess with Papa Squiz. I don't know why. I just feel like you can't mess with him. You just can't. The gamer tag is too good. Uh, I mean, anyone who has Papa or True. maybe da or Daddy in oh, their God. clan tag or in their, their PSN. I, I mean, or Quavo. No, or Quavo. Yeah, you cannot mess with Quavo. Quavo, Daddy. Papa, can't mess with them. <laughs> you literally can't. can't. If you see that as like the beginning name or beginning of the gamer tag, it's just almost like, hey guys, I think we should go and forfeit this one. Yeah. I just don't think it's going to be, uh, at least for me, at least yeah. I would definitely be thinking about forfeiting. Do not want to face off against any of those guys. It, it used to be funny because it used to, uh, now, of course, now it's kind of like a little bit of a, of a joke, but like back in the day, it was like, if this guy has XX underscore, then his name underscore XX, it's like, oh gosh, like this guy's legit. Or if like all of them had the same team name or something like that, it was like, oh shit. Oh, yeah, no. If they, all have, if they all have the same, yeah, if they all have the same, like, uh, perfect gamer tags, yeah. like they're all clean and they got their whatever their uh, abbreviation is in there, I'm like, oh, geez, we lost this one. Good luck, guys. Yeah, especially if you're in, like, a public game or if you are uh, used to play League Play back in the day oh, yeah. and Black Ops 2 and uh, you're kind of playing solo, it's like, oh, geez, like, this is going to hurt. Or, uh, you know, if they have, like, the yeah, multicolored like, yeah. clan tag because they prestige, like, 27 times or something <laughs> like that, it's like, uh, okay. this is going to be yeah. rough. But, uh, yeah, look out for Quavo. Uh, speaking of rough, <laughs> one in five at uh, Pow wow. How, how would you power? Power? Power, I think. Power. I'll say power. Yeah, I was definitely oh. gonna, I actually went with your prediction or your uh, early pick. So I'm glad that you uh, deciphered that one for me because I was probably going to make a fool of myself if I said the name. <laughs> I mean, I, I tried. I tried my best. You did. But uh, he's one in five right now. He's probably going to need to pick it up just a bit for them to, ha to have a chance. Uh, Papa Squiz, though, nine and three. Don't mess with the Papas. Can't. Can't do it at all. Quantic. Reaches that top story building, of course, currently sitting in Pawn. And so he will drop down just shortly after that one. Drafty also with the sniper rifle in hand. Shuts down Squiz coming from strip window. So a 2v3 bomb should be going down here from Nimbo. And it will be doing that into such an aquatic. He was around this corner. Could get the pick, but just misses the shot. His position is now known. And uh, Drafty as well with the sniper rifle in hand from afar. So it looks like Drafty and Aquanic both with pistols up close. They find kills, and now it's up to power by himself. Does he have the power? Is the question. More player on front, right in front of him, but no, he will not find that one. Aquanic will be able to clutch that one out in a interesting ending to that round as both Aquanic and his teammate use the pistols to clutch it out. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't get that. Listen, man, we're just not we're just not skilled enough to know. Apparently not. These tactics. I don't know. I don't get that. We're just not. I mean, uh, interesting to see Power lose to pistols. Um, maybe uh, you kind of jinxed him, saying, "Does he have the power?" Because uh, he obviously did not have the power on that round. By no means did he. But will he have it for the next Power kind of when you say when you say when you say Power, it kind of sounds like you're you're Mike Tyson saying Power, oh, like gosh. Power. How dare you dis disrespect that man? I'm not disrespect. Mike Tyson is a legend, and I love the man. But uh, <laughs> the dude has a, a bit of a lisp, just a tiny bit. He does. So. Uh, Maybe, uh, 
As Powell goes down again, two and seven, not looking good. But Papa Squiz, ten and four. His yes, drafty actually gets the worst starting possible as uh, Papa Squiz, yet again, will be there for the finish. Double digits. Aquanic trying to get there could definitely reach ten if he was able to clutch out this one v two. Of course, uh, Bomb not in his current possession does have a Remington and a Vector in his back pocket. So this one is uh, by no means out of the question. But what's the play call? Doesn't have a whole lot of time to make it over to the ace. That would be very risky to try. It made that play happen, but up close finds one. And can't find the second though. A squiz will be there for the shutdown. As he will now reach 12 and 4. So we've had, uh, what, a strong performance from OTO. How many kills did he finish off with? 14? In uh, one of the, the map number 2? 14, 8, and now he has 6. So it, it's looking like to see, it's like, it, it basically, whoever has the all-star player on the, on, on the map where they get double-digit kills is kind of who's taken these maps so far. Yeah, it's kind of been all about uh, all-star performances, or all-star performers rather than uh, consistency, which is pretty interesting to kind of note. But OTO yet again making a very aggressive rush, as he tends to do. Smoke will not grant him cover because Pawa was just off toward the side. But uh, continuing rushes, going through his Aquanic, looking towards the opposite angle as of both Aquanic and OTO look the opposite way that they need to, as it will now be left up to Sham. Wow, and a 1v4 to at least forced overtime. And if we know anything about the Sandlot, they are experienced when it comes in overtimes, at least as far as this tournament is considered. But four players stand in the way. Now make it three. As honestly, if he plays his angles correctly, he does have a Thermal Remington, but it's not going to be enough. Peeks out just too long, and Pawa is there for the responding kill, as it will be a victory here in round 10. Overall at 6-4 to four for the side of Fat. As I'll take this one, and I gotta say, I'm pretty surprised. I think it's fair to say, for the side of Sandlot, you know, granted, uh, the side of Sandlot didn't get to play Octane in their prior series. We got to see, you know, fairly close up maps uh, in, like, in the likes of Sovereign, of course, um, you know, on Freight as well. So I I'm curious when it comes into Freight and Sovereign, where, which are actually going to be our next two maps. I think they're going to play a lot better, uh, but you can't obviously not pop a squiz, man. He's playing pretty well right now. Yeah, I'm, Octane is, is an interesting map. It's kind of up in the air for a lot of people and a lot of teams. People Some some, some teams are really comfortable playing it. Others, I, I've heard RCDs and Pristine while playing Wages with them say it's kind of like a... It's a map where kind of the the randomness comes into play, and people who kind of don't know what they're doing win. But not to say they don't know what they're doing, but that's what's been said in the past. Hopefully, these freight and sovereign they pick it back up. Absolutely, well, guys, we will figure that out. Can Fat close this one out in a two? Oh, can Papa Squiz and Co. take this one in a swift fashion, or will we see the side of the Sandlot make a comeback? One that nearly was made on them in their prior series. We'll find that information when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ghost 44 Search and Destroy for September 26th. It's myself, Lando, joined by Taylor Keating. And Taylor, we're getting ready to hop in here toward map number two. This one going to be on Freight, a much different play style than on the prior one on Octane. But regardless, we've got Sandlot going up against the side of Fat. And Fat, along with Papa Squiz, they were able to take map number one at six rounds to four. And I want to know your prediction, actually. When it comes in a freight, who are you looking at? Do you think Fat can close this one out in a 2-0, or are we looking at Sandlot to potentially force the map 3, in your opinion? Well, I, I think Sandlot, as they take round 1, uh, or no, oh no, they take round 1. Uh, uh, Sandlot's going to take this 100%. Uh, oh, okay. I'm fully confident in the, yeah, I'm, I'm very confident. I'm very confident. I don't, I, hey, man, I don't, I don't mind it. Don't mind uh, it at all. They took down prob <laughs> listen. Sometimes you just gotta you gotta put your foot down and say, "Hey, I believe in you. Okay. I believe in this team. I believe in Aquanic. I believe in Drafty." Do you and believe of course, that they will, that they will win? Hundred percent. I'm hundred percent calling it right now. So Sandlot, you, believe you believe that they will win. You believe that they will win. You believe that they will win. Is that correct? <laughs> you got the puns, don't you? I do. I have a little bit in my back pocket. Just a I few. I appreciate though. it. Not that many, but uh, you know, on occasion, I I, I might have a pun <laughs> or two. Uh, you know, ready to go. But the Demi. And kills happen for the first blood. That one going to be on Sham. Wow. As a Sham will now gasp. As he's already sitting down for the first blood. Kills beginning to come through yet again. As Drafty and Co. looking up toward that top side. Inside of Red Aquanic will be there to shut down Papa Squiz. 
cannot say Papa School is without uh, adding inflection to it just because of how great a gamer tag it is. Nimbo. Middle map. Engagement. Thankfully hands the nice shots coming in from Powell. Very interesting gamer tag. I think it's fair to say for the side of Fat. Along with a great team name, we've got Nimbo, Pawa, Demi, and Papa Squiz. I really don't think we could ask for more entertaining gamer tags. Well, I, I really I love the power power power. There's so many things that we could play off of that. Oh yeah. Obviously we've played off it already. <laughs> I said the Mike Tyson thing. Uh, but it's a two v two situation. I'm looking for drafting who Aquanic, who played together for a lot of these SMD tournaments to, to come through. But uh, as I just say, that drafting gets taken down. It's a one v two situation. Aquanic going up against Power and Nimba. Aquanic, great intuition to find the first one. Can he find the second? Yes, Aquanic making Ooh. it look easy as he will Let clutch out that one on two extra shots for good measure. As you can see, the reaction that comes in here from that final player just immediate turn to try and find where Aquanic was. But Doctor making it look easy as he will destroy his patience in that one. I'm done. I'm, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't stop. Destroy his patience? I'm sitting down. Uh, I don't know if that makes... I don't know if that makes sense, but... Uh, uh, shooting bodies. No. I think that was just more like... He was, he was making sure you killed him all the way. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah, you absolutely. just gotta make sure. I don't... You know, we, we can't assume that he's shooting his body on purpose is, is because he, he thinks no, he's okay. better and the best. You never can't know. assume those things, but uh, I, I hope he's not killing his patients. That's uh, something that I hope he's not oh, doing. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, but uh, Drafty, nice. Might, I... Ooh, Drafty. Oh. Ooh. Okay, man, Drafty. What did I say? Drafty or Aquanic. Which one? They're, they're competing over here for who can get the best highlight play. The Kobe nade along with the nice wall bank for the train. I think Aquanix was a little bit more impressive, but Drafty's was, was very sleek. I respect it. Drafty's was like, I well, know I... this is about to happen. Aquanix was just like, hey, I have superhuman vision, and I know exactly where everyone is. Yeah, Aquanix looked like he kind of had Walhawks for a second, he shooting did. through the bomb, but uh, he uh, anticipated it very well. Uh, as they're both playing to my standards, a 3-0. I kind of called it at the beginning. Kind of doing a little Mystic Mac action. Conor McGregor. The 3L, hopefully, on the side of Papa Squiz, who I've been pulling for, as as Power can uh, get a little comeback going. Potentially, Demi, nice angle held there just behind that wood pile. Of course, he will be dropped shortly after that one. OTO finding one quickly gets straight out there from Power. Now it's up to the drafty in a 1v3. Player just behind him gets the awkward timing, and Nimbo will be there for the shutdown. As a much needed round, if you are the side of Fat. Uh, I think it's fair to say. You cannot be going down 4-0 to zero as far as round count is considered. Especially on a map like Freight, where uh, defense usually does reign true. And it goes to show it does there for the side of Fat. But uh, how will they respond on offense is the question. I know we've kind of talked about this. And I know we talked about it as well. And uh, the prime tournament that we actually did last weekend, or last week, excuse me, uh, was I was always interested to see the strategies coming in for offensive teams. You know, what's what's the strategy call? You obviously have to force some attention over toward red. Uh, you kind of you force some attention toward underground. You find those nades on that wood pile, or you know, what, what's the play call for a lot of these teams? But it seems that the offensive call, at least for Fat, uh, coming into this round, is to not actually grab the bomb. So not one that I think is uh, a sound strategy, uh, but one that could surprise. Well, Papa Squiz went back and he heard you. He got the bomb. He's he good. I mean, two v three situation. He's got a thermal. Uh, it's, freight is 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 really difficult on offense. Uh, it's kind of easy to just post up on defense on and, and kind of get those first bloods. Um, as you see, it's a one v three situation for Papa Squiz. Not looking good. Yep, not at all. But shuts down Sham. Wow, inside of red. Up top, third story. Red. The pistol out. Can he find the kill? And yes, oh, Papa no. Squiz finds that one. But too many players. Too many angles to hold, and Drafty will be there for the pickup. Of course, that round looks a little bit easier for Drafty. Instead of having three enemies, he has one who's already one shot. As you will find that player in the side of red. As Papa Squiz will be laid to rest. Rather unfortunate, but 4 you saw one Aquanic for Sandlot. Yeah, 4 to one You saw Aquanic kind of lose him in the uh, upper red. It's, it's kind of hard to see up there when you're trying to shoot down, and there's... The, the lift, and there's all this, it's, it's, it's difficult, man. And I've, I've been there, I've been there. Absolutely, of course, uh, heading into this round six, Demi, along with Papa Squiz, forcing a lot of attention toward that red side, but in fact, it's actually the opposite push 
that we're seeing being made. Sham Wow with that bomb in hand being one of the first lines coming through underground. And at least this player toward Backstar, which actually is going to be Nimbo. I'm not sure if he didn't make the call out out or just didn't hear it or, or maybe it's just his teammates not thinking that that push was going to happen. Maybe it was rather just a bait. Uh, but still that push coming in from red, those players have not made that rotation over. And we'll see if that ends up Binding them in the end as OTL will find one. He actually ends up getting shut down there from Pala. As Pala will wrap back to help out his teammate. And it looks like just now it's going to be drafty 1v3. As in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back scenarios, he's left in a position to be in the final kill cam. But Papa Squiz, make it look easy. So he'll get his retribution inside of red. And uh, we'll shut down drafty in this scenario. So rolls reversed. And Papa Squiz threw some body shots back out of the, the side of Sandlot. Yeah, we're getting a little feisty now. Eh? I lo are. like it. I like it. Do you? I mean, honestly, sometimes you just gotta shoot some bodies to just get your team hyped. Get, you do. Get, gas them up. You know what I mean? Or maybe you really your, do. Your fingers I mean, it's all in good fun at the end of the day. Yeah. Sometimes people forget that this is a game. At the end of the day, it really is. It it's is. just for fun. I guess we're playing for money. Yes. But again, it's a game. Uh, let's especially with a team name like Sandlot. Come on, man. It's a great name. However, I do think that slightly fat is slightly more creative, I think, especially when there's no capitalizations in it. They're just like, yeah, this is uh, this is what <sighs> I, I don't mean... know. I don't know. It's, it's kind of depending on uh, what your your style of uh, of taste is when it comes down to uh, you know humor and whatnot. But regardless, looking at Demi right now, he seems gonna man advantage before he drops with the bomb actually in hand. I believe that Aquanic probably got the information that that bomb has dropped and uh, quickly wraps back to shut down Squiz. And now Pala left in a one on two. Much like uh, Will I Am said in his one song, got that power. Can he do it? <laughs> Can he clutch it out. Actually uh, hops up, grabs the bomb, quick reaction, oh. and it uh, looks like a team shot comes in from Sham Wow. But he at least finds the final player. So in the end, it's an awkward engagement where Aquanic's pretty much yelling. But a Sham Wow's like, hey man, calm down. I got the, I got the gunfight. We won it. Don't worry about it. So five rounds to one now. Yeah. Mm, Powell with a quick reaction, he just looked kind of five nervous. Two, and uh, yeah, he looks kind of nervous and, and got some shots in, but uh, turned too quick as he was uh, kind of scared that his second teammate was going to take him out. And as he did. Did he done? So Andy got you, here. though. That all star, man. He's the all star of the team, I'm telling you. That's why I picked him. Yep, very solid player as the OTL finishes off Power. At the same time, Shan Wow shutting down another Aquanic there on Nimbo. And now Demi left in a position to try and clutch. Before I can even utter the words, the game will be set in stone as it will be a map number two victory, a dominant one for the side of Sandlot as they win this one at six rounds to two on some freights. Along with both Drafty and Aquanic dropping nine kills apiece. And on the opposite side, though, Papa Squiz still, still playing well. He drops nine and six, but uh, can't have the teammates pick up the pace. As uh, only two rounds will be granted for them. So heading into map number three will be S&D on Sovereign. You know, obviously it does play a little bit differently than, uh, you know, obviously what we got to see on Octane. For the side of Fent, I think we're going to see the side of Sandlot have a lot more confidence when it comes into this map. I think it's fair to say, Taylor, uh, you know, just because of the fact of these strong suits and their up close fights, I think they definitely like the vectors to be in their hands. Uh, you know, prefer toward the side of Fent, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm personally going with the prediction of Sandlot. I, I think we see on Sovereign OTO go off again, along with Drafty, who's going to clutch out a one v two for the victory. Uh, what, what are you thinking? Well, I just called this map correctly. Uh, Sandlot, again, is going to win the next map. I think they're just more suited for that close quarter gunfights. Their vectors are on point. Drafty and Aquanic and OTO are lights out. I fully expect them to take this map three. We're both going with the side of Sandlot, but can Fat prove us wrong? Can their amazing team name show that we are just underestimating them? We will find that out when we come back from this quick commercial break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for, to the Ghost 4v4 Search and Destroy for September 26th. It's myself, Lando, joined by Taylor Keating as we're hopping in, like I said, toward map number three bet between the side of Fat and the Sandlot. The Sandlot ended up taking a pretty dominant map to victory. They won that one six rounds to two. They're now trying to propel themselves to another dominant victory currently looking at the perspective of sham wow as he had a pretty easy sight had his teammates play bait on b gets the bomb down here without any trouble whatsoever 
but that trouble could st slowly start to change. But the gunfights go their way, and now it's up to Dimmy in a 1v3. An awful opportunity to try and get that retake forward just because of his positioning. And round that will go the side of the Sandlot's favor. And Taylor, I know we're both predicting this team. And I think it's fair to say the reason why we predict this team to win is not just because we've got to watch them play, but the dominance that we've been seeing come in from Drafty, from Aquanic, and on this map in our last series from OTO. These guys just know how to stack rounds. They know how to stack rounds quick. Yeah, I mean, the, the vectors on this team are top-notch. Uh, obviously, we saw them take out the likes of Felony, uh, Ferocities, Blats, and Rallied, who are top tier SP stars in their own right. As Shamwell is turning up on this round, he, he was kind of quiet the first couple games, but this round is, is his for the taking. As he gets taken down in B, but uh, I, I fully expect them to, to pull this out. Uh, th their vectors are just uh, top notch. They definitely are. It will be a difficult task if you are on the team known as Fats. Of course, if you are just joining us, that is actually their team name. It's not a, uh, you know, a rude comment that I'm making toward any of the players. It just happens to be the team that they chose for this tournament. So all the respect to them. But uh, Drafty love to try and shut down both Nimbo and Powa. Drafty's position already known. Player toward that right side of Ness. Can he finish off the kill is the question. Only hit markers gained and Powa will be there for the response. Gets the headshot just for good measure. And the next round to respond with as the uh, vector shots at range go toward his team's favor. So heading in toward round at number three. I think honestly when it comes down toward the side of Fat Taylor, we have to be looking at Papa Squiz. This guy, despite a loss in map two, in both of the maps, Really played very, very strong. Uh, he was the guy who was kind of getting things done. Uh, I think it's fair to say if you are the side of fat, that's, that's kind of the guy who is your all-star. And I think if they can kind of propel him to kind of play well yet again, uh, I think they definitely have a chance. But if he's not playing well, it, it honestly is just going to deplete their chances of winning even more, I feel like. I, I completely agree. But it, it, real quick, Aquanic has a uh, shotgun in his Ooh, hand right now. Attack. I like this. I've been talking about this. In the, in the prime that we casted last week, I talked about how I was super excited to potentially see shotguns be rocked. I think OTO also has one as he uh, also falls, just shorting, uh, just shutting down one player. But uh, the shotguns on Sovereign Man, they work. And if you're inside a map room or inside bomb room here in B, it is so difficult to be killed. And I feel like every time that we see a player with that shotgun in hand, they usually go off. And Aquanic should not lose his gunfight any time soon as uh, Powa just happens to jump. On the opposite side, shoots shots just to let his position be known, and Aquanic Whoa. literally one shots him in the foot, in the, in the ankle. The he just shooting, shooting, turns, hits him in the toes, and the femur hits him in the femur, in right? One in the femur. leg. Yep. Good night. Yeah, my producer just, just held his hand up. Yeah, the femur is a body part, and it's uh near your near <laughs> your leg. Well, I mean, it's in your leg. You're definitely not Doctor Aquanic, and I don't think I'm you're not. qualified to speak on on those uh. Things, but uh, I'm not. I, I always love I always love seeing shotguns. They're, they're, I know a lot of people don't like playing against them, but uh, shotguns are definitely uh, fun to watch on a map like Sovereign. Absolutely are. Of course, a lot of teams do agree to not using them, so it's kind of like an odd thing to kind of call. It's like, well, these guys agree. Well, we don't really know, but it seems that uh, at least the shotguns in this one, they're ready to be pulled out. No strings attached to this map. As you can see, Pow up looking... Toward that top crane, you will see players right alongside that one quite often as uh, Powell will be able to transfer the fire there onto draft. At the same time, Demi shutting down OTO. Man, disadvantage for the side of Sandlot as it will be a clonic this time with a regular gun in hand. This time it's the Remington. And he's heading into bomb room. He definitely has the vector out. Finds one on the bomb, but Nimbo was there for the pickup. And much needed around there coming in from the side of Fats as it will be Nimbo in the round ending kill cam. Watching over his teammate. Playing the trades well. Yeah, those trades come in handy, definitely inside of B. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see more shotguns, man. I want to see shotties. shotguns. I want to see. I want more shot. Uh, high intensity, speed, aggression, gameplay. I want to see it. Looks like on the as offense, there are for... none. There are none, as I say that, yep. which is kind of quite disappointing, honestly. He looks at the offensive rush coming in here is that uh, one that's put underground uh, both Aquanic and his teammate Drafty clearing out that A site for the most part 
as the kills have already started to take a place. Pala is able to respond with one, actually finds two. Aquanic is there for the pickup. But now it's Demi left in a 1v2. His teammate has done the work, but can he find their final two? One that's not necessarily looking the most likely, but the bomb isn't down. He's obviously on the defensive side. So he does have that going for him currently. But once that bomb goes down, the rolls are reversed, and he is going to have to make that push onto his site. But currently holding that one on A. It is a pretty risky play if the drafting co were to go over toward that A site, just because of the amount of line sites that, uh, that Demi could be hiding in. Uh, but I think Demi's playing this one pretty well right now. He's not moving out of position whatsoever, kind of holding his ground. And, uh, you know, could have a player run into his line site. But uh, at least from his knowledge, that could be taking place. However, though, bomb just narrowly grabbed. And they're only going to have a few seconds left to get that bomb down. They will successfully do such. But we'll see how the play call comes in from Demi as he realizes that he has chose the wrong site. And we'll see what his play call is on this retake. It was interesting that as we've watched Sandlot so far, drafting Aquanic are usually a, 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 like last alive a lot. Uh, I, I don't know if that's just the team chem of them playing a lot of uh, S and D tourneys because we've seen them in the past, but um, usually they're they're usually last alive a lot and they usually clutch up as you just saw there with Aquanic on the final kill cam. Yep, solid plays coming in from all players. I think it's fair to say throughout the uh, last two series that we've gotten to witness. From the side of Sandlot, of course, uh, for really the first time, we've gotten to see ShamWow have uh, one of the bigger performances for this side. And one that we talked about needed to happen as far as consistency is considered. And uh, regardless of that, we'll be seeing how this next offensive round will be going for the side of Fat. As uh, players dropping from either side, both Demi and Drafty will not partake in this round number six. Stun coming in for Nimbo. He's got that bomb in hand. and. Seen a little bit of white on his screen as uh, his teammate Squiz will shut down another one. Aquanic and Shan Wow now left in a position to clutch. Both players currently sitting at five kills, wanting to increase that total. And Aquanic actually on the ladder spots one, and I believe that player who was in that room was Papa Squiz. Papa Squiz could have swore he saw a ghost. He wraps back around, and the knives come through. Papa Squiz finds one with the knife. Aquanic is there with the knife as well. Bringing knives to gunfights, but Nimbo is there for the responding kill on Aquanic. A very interesting ending to that round, but one that regardless goes toward the side of fat. We've seen so many knives in War Room. It's like that's like the knife room of, of Call of Duty Ghosts. Knives on knives on knives. I feel like that should be a song. And knife knifing in this game is so interesting too, by the way. It's it's almost like uh, as we see Aquanic, let's yep. switch back over to Aquanic right now. He's got the shotgun. Let's see what he does. He's gonna get to that. Oh wall. wait! Oh, he switches. Come on, Aquanic! What's the deal here? Dude. I'm angry. It's disrespectful. Uh, disrespectful. I, I think he switches to to rock the nades. Probably like a call from his teammates. Hey, like we need to clear out this site, or uh, you know something along those lines. But regardless, it's whatever. I'm a little bit angry, but I'll get over it. Aquanic, uh, I really want to. It's fine, man. Yeah, I, I like whatever. Aquanic's a good player. If he, uh, he's a doctor, man. We can't disrespect him like that. You know what I mean? We can't. We can't doctor disrespect him by any means. By no means can we do that. <laughs> oh. Drafty inside of map room right now with his teammate getting ready to potentially push out. There's a lot of players in a lot of close angles as uh, Nimbo will actually pick up one on Drafty. Not sure how that particular kill went into place, but it does not matter. Kills happen at quick rates as uh, three players of fat drop, and I think about 2.3 seconds as the doctor will find yet to get another kill. As he will increase his total now to 7 and 3. However, not the most in the lobby. It's actually currently Pawa sitting at 8 and 4 for the side of Fat. As uh, he's going to have at least going to need Demi to kind of pick it up a little bit. Demi, 8, 1, 8. Killing sitting at 2 and 7. He's going to have to start to raise those numbers a little bit if he expects to uh, get his team back into a likelihood of walking away with the series. OTO got really aggressive, ran right into the entire team of Salem, of uh, Fat, I believe, actually. Great team name, by the way. Every time I say it, I'm like, wow, who came up with that? That's creativity at its finest. Absolutely is. ShamWow picking up some kills. That one going to be on Demi. Aquatic entering through, finds one, finds one on the sprint away as he will clean up those. Gonna let him know. A long. With I don't know. The diffuse, it's now going to be five rounds to three in favor of the side of Sandlot. As the drafty 
unfortunately will commit suicide. Just couldn't handle the pressure. You can't handle the pressure of being up in the game. Uh, man, a, a Quantic is going off, man. 9 and 3. He just ran through that entire bomb site and just shot through people. Yeah. He just didn't care. He just sprinted and murdered people. Not with the shotgun, unfortunately, but. Uh, Not this time. Nonetheless. Nonetheless, 5 3. Uh, predictions staying true right now. Yep, I think it's fair to say. Sandlot playing very strong. Would have to have a major come apart if we end up seeing the side of Fat come forward and just the uh, likelihood of them winning this series starts to continue to go their way as the early nade going through. Responding kill as well. And now Powell left all by himself. One on three just to try and stay alive. But it's not going to happen. Sham Wow will have his turn at a strong match as he will finish off 8-6 and six, along with Aquanic finishing 11-3 and three, as they will close out this series. It went to yet again another map 3. Their pass series versus Hunnit saw the exact same scoreline. However, it was a 6-3 to three victory in the end on Sovereign toward the side of Sandlot. So the interesting story, the Sandlot storyline will continue on as we will see them advance in this tournament. But I think it's fair to say, say that we did kind of predict these guys to probably win this series. I think it's fair to say. We, we have heard, at least I personally have heard of Demi. I've heard of Nimbo, I believe, in the past. Uh, Papa Squiz is definitely a name that I will not forget, uh, along with Pala. I think it's fair to say. But still, those guys put up a, a decent fight, to say the least. Took Matt number one on Octane. However, when it came down to the close-range gunfights, the vector play definitely plays favor toward the side of Sandlot. Something that a lot of teams in the rest of this tournament are going to have to face off against. But still, guys, before we head to a commercial break and get into our next series... I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, shout out to Origin PC, Acquire Clothing, Scuff Gaming, and Zowie, a brand by BenQ. Of course, major thank you to our sponsors yet again for making tournaments like this one happen. Of course, live here from the UMG studio. But guys, we're going to head to a commercial break. When we return, our next match here from the Ghost 44 Search and Destroy for September 26th. We will be right back. 